I'm Anil Kumar. In these set of videos, we will understand how to write polynomial equations from given graph. But in this particular video, we'll first try to understand how the transformations are applied and what kind of changes in the graph do we see on such transformations. What we're given here is a graph of y equals to x cube. Now, whenever you're considering y equals to x cube, there are some key points which you should always consider to find the equation from the graph or to describe the transformations. Both are kind of related. Key points, we have marked three of them here. So the first coordinate point which is very important to understand is that for minus 1, minus 1 cube is minus 1. So it is minus 1, minus 1, then it goes through 0 and 1 cube is 1. So these three are key points. Another important thing to understand is the end behavior. So we'll write end behavior here. Now end behavior is what happens to the graph of the function when x approaches both extremes. When x approaches negative infinity, this side, then you see f of x or y value approaches negative infinity and when x approaches positive infinity on the right side y approaches positive infinity right so normally I say in this case coefficient is positive so what we notice is that when this coefficient is positive then the right side is up I use this term many times, so let me explain you what I mean. Right side up means that what happens to the graph when x is approaching infinity, right? So this part. So right side is up, and that is the case when leading coefficient, what we say here, a, right? It is positive 1. So in this case, a equals to plus 1, and that's the reason. So whenever in a polynomial, leading coefficient is positive, right side is up. Correct. So that end behavior is very important to understand while sketching transformed functions or even writing equations from the graph of transformed functions. Okay. Now, let us consider different types of transformations one by one. So, so first, let me show you what happens with translations. So whenever translations are involved, in that case, shape remains exactly same we get congruent graphs but the graph is displaced depending on the translations so if the translation is let us say to the right by let's say by two units let's say if we translate this graph right by two units so we are now giving an example so we are saying two units right and let us say we bring it uh, let us keep it simple one in one unit down okay so two units right one unit down okay and one unit down now what happens is that each point moves in this fashion so c will come here so we'll have c dash here right now B to goes two units right, one unit down will appear here. So that becomes the position for B dash. A will also move one and one, two units right, one unit down. So that will be the position for A right. So, so this is at minus one. When you add two, you get plus one. And when you take away one, you get minus two. Correct? Here it is zero. So you, the position should be two, one. And then for 1, if you do 2 units right, 1 becomes 3, 1 plus 2, and then this right. So, so that is what we get. And the shape of the graph is kind of like this. Do you see that? Shape remains same. Is that okay? And behavior is same, the right side up, right? So right side up, so we just sketch it like this. Opposite ends. So if it is an odd degree, we know it is opposite ends. So we get a graph which is kind of like this. If you translate, it overlaps. So they are exactly the same graphs. 
So that is what we get. And now, can you write down the equation from this graph? Well, we know the transformations. We have seen that this point moves two units right, one up, and all the points move two units right, one, one down. I'm sorry, two units right, one down. Therefore, the function, let me call this function as, let us say, let's call this as uh, p of x. Okay. So, p of x could be written as, let me write down in a different ink. Uh, let's say this, okay, p of x could be written as, let me write down here. So we get the function p of x as equal to, since horizontal translation is 2 units right, it becomes x minus 2, right? That makes x 0, 4, plus 2, cubic function. And how many units down? 1 unit down, that means minus 1. So from the graph, you can get this equation for p of x. Got it, right? Now, we will also take some vertical stretch or compression into consideration. So, let me write down different kind of uh, uh, transformation. And this time, let me say that we will actually involve a reflection on x-axis. Okay. And then we will involve vertical stretch by factor of factor of let us say two. Okay, so we are stretching it vertically by a factor of two, and let me translate it a bit to the left side so that I get a neat graph on this side. Okay, so we'll translate on the left side. We say two units. So we'll translate more, we've got a lot of space here. So, so we'll translate, uh, let's say, two units left. And uh, let's move uh, this time again, uh, one unit down. So, so let, let's say one unit down, one unit down as before. Okay, so that's the kind of uh, transformation which we are looking into and let's incorporate these transformations and then sketch the graph. So when you say reflect on x-axis, in that case, right side which was going up comes downwards. So basically the orientation changes. Do you see that? So right side will be down. So this means the right side will be down. So the end behavior is kind of going downwards. Is that okay? Right. And when you say vertical stretch by a factor of 2, then these y values will get multiplied by 2, right? They will get multiplied by 2. And 2 units left, 1 unit down is similar to this, except for moving towards left and then down, right? So that is the kind of transformation which takes place. So let me again begin with point A this time. So we are saying reflect on x-axis. So when I, this is my x-axis, when I reflect A on x-axis, we get a point here, okay? Then vertically stretch by a factor of 2. So we get 1. 1 times 2 is 2, so it gets to this position. And then we are saying 2 units left, 1 down. So we go 1, 2 units left, and then 1 down. So that becomes the position for A, right? So let me call this as A double dash. Correct. Similarly, let's do B. Reflection on x-axis, it remains there itself. Vertically stretch 0 times 2 is 0, it remains there itself. 2 units left, 1 down. So that means 1, 2, and then 1 down. That is the position for B double dash. C. Reflection on x-axis brings it to this side. Is that okay? That is reflection C. And then vertical stretch by a factor of 2, minus 1 times 2 is minus 2, it comes here. And then 2 units left, 1 down, 1, 2 units left, 1 down. So we get this point right there. Do you get the idea? So we get this as C double dash, this point. You can clearly see that this portion has been stretched, right? So it is no more that flat. If I connect this with that kind of a graph, it will be a bit like this and then kind of do you see that so it kind of goes like this now this function is not congruent 
correct this is not congruent to the previous or the original function it is more stretched and stretched by a factor of two right you can always see that stretch if you find the difference between these two points if you find the difference between these two points here normally it is one now in this case it is two so it is by two right so it is stretched by a factor of two second right side is down therefore it is negative do you see that part now that helps us to get the equation and now we can write equation of this function let me call this as g of x as equal to since you see let's now we are trying to write down equation from the graph forget about this description let's see from the graph from the graph we see that the right side is down therefore leading coefficient is negative right side down you get the idea now we're looking for vertical stretch now when you're talking about polynomial equations in for transform functions general formula will be let me write down general formula also then we'll fill up right so we are trying to write f of x as a times uh, some function let's say g right of uh, let's say k x minus p plus q okay this kind of a function that is the transform function right now we know a is negative since right side is down this is because of right side down so we have right side down let me write down here right down that results into negative and then we look for the stretch factor from that original position saddle type the next point one unit away is two down so that is minus two you get an idea right so we get the value of a and now we're looking into the function which is x cube so we'll write something q now you have to take care of translations horizontal inside two units left means x plus two minus two will make it zero and one unit down means minus one and that is how you get your function correct so from the graph you get your function in this way you could always check your result right so you can check that is an exercise for you use these points to check one of these points for you is minus 3 1 so you can substitute minus 3 check if you get 1 you could also substitute minus 1 and see if you get minus 3 as the y value so that will ensure that the equation which you got from the graph is correct so I hope with this example you should be in a position to write equation for polynomials from the given graph especially if you have cubic function to consider. I'm Anil Kumar. You can subscribe. Feel free to write down your comments, share and all the best. Thank you.